Shalom, give me all praise and all God's name. Before I ask any other blessing, I want to just look at there. <clears throat> and I'm going to entitle this video, <clears throat> The Christian Scholars Don't Know the Prophecies of the Bible. And um, what I'm going to get into, as you see, on the screen, you see Revelation 18, verse 2. It's one of my favorite prophecies. And I compare Revelation chapter 18 to closing credits of a, a movie, an epic movie. Like, uh, give me an example of a particular movie that just came to mind, uh, Apocalypse Now, at the end of the movie, they had bombed that particular island with the people, Vietnam, Vietnamese people. You had uh, this guy, uh, General Walter E. Kirks. Or was he, I don't know if he was a general. I, I don't know if he was a general. I think he was, uh, he was on somebody helped me out. I don't think he was a general. But he had a high rank and he kind of did his own thing. So they had to send out um, mercenaries to go and kill him. So at the end of the movie, um, they they killed, he got killed by the main character. And, uh, and um, they had bombed the airstrike the place. They called in an airstrike and they just, and they killed everybody in there. And then you see the credits coming up, you know, and you're leaving the movie or whatever, looking at the credits. So that's how I look at Revelation 18. It's pretty much the credits going up of uh, this place being destroyed. But anyway, so what I did was <clears throat> I went to Revelation 18. I read one. It was just an opening and one. Let's go to that. Revelation now, either they know and they're pretending not to know or they just don't know. But they hint at it. And uh, one of the precepts, I mean, one of the commentaries, they even mentioned a scripture that mentions Edom. It says, and after these things, I saw an, another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. <clears throat> And he cried uh, mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the greatest fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, at the main school, the seven, mainly Ariah, he went into the prophetic. He was the number one individual that went into the uh, prophetic scriptures, you know, like Re Revelation, uh, Ezekiel's, the... Obadiah's, Daniel's, Jeremiah's, Isaiah's, and so forth. Uh, Zephaniah, Zach Zachariah. And um, I remember him teaching that. This is talking about Gad was here. Then when Esau came into this land, they kind of messed the land up because the foul, it says, uh, become the habitation of devils and he'll say that's talking about Esau because they're a bunch of devils which he was he was clearly wrong on that clearly wrong so he was talking about from a time period when Gad was here Reuben was here and the other the other the other northern kingdom tribes was in central and south America that's when the so-called white man came in so this is the fulfillment of that. Because they're devils and foul spirits, meaning that, that they're moles in a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. So this man is a hateful bird. And um, the symbol of uh, this place is the eagle, which is a scavenger. So that would be considered a hateful bird. He, was, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't be no further from the truth. He wasn't even close to the truth. Let me put it to you that way. And um, I don't, I don't know when I said I didn't see it, but when he said it, 
And I went through it because I was new, new. So I, I said, okay, he said, that's what it means. So that's what it means. But as you, as you grow in this truth, you study on your own. And then you see that there were certain things that um, they kind of went off on. So like I said, when he said that, and as me being in this truth for years, I said, nope, that's talking about after the destruction. That's talking about after the smoke is clear. That's what that's talking about. So anyway, I wanted to get into this. The second verse. So let me read that again. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, and these, let me say this, just as the title says, these Christian scholars, these professors, and that includes Dr. Brown and all the rest of them, all the rabbis, all the experts, all the uh, graduates of these various theological cemeteries, I call them cemeteries, not seminaries, none of them, not one, not one. Well, maybe you have certain Christians that are Edomites or appear to be Edomites that will equate Babylon the Great with the U.S. If you go on Google, it'll pop up. There's a, a few books, at least one book, that speaks about uh, Babylon. Um, and I might, you know what I might do? I might just order that book just to go just to go into it. Um, but there was a there's a couple of Christian what appears to be Edomites, because they could be Jake looking like Edomites. They could, they, they, those one, two or three individuals that teach that, they'll come out and actually say it, that th that's talking about, you know, the United States, that's talking about America. And I'm pretty sure that there's some of them that have come up through the ranks and Christianity, be, you know, graduated from whatever cemetery they graduated from, and did research and had lectures and debates. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure some of them, at least in their minds, say, could this be talking about Bab um, the U.S.? And like I said, some of them, some of them are. If you look it up, as a matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Since I since I keep talking on it, let me go to that. Bring this over here. Slide this over here. Is America Babylon the Great? Is America Babylon? Is America Babylon the Great? So let's click on that. So you got is America Babylon. Now we can prove that America is Babylon the Great and we can prove that its great seal is a seal of the Antichrist per Daniel the prophet. And we can prove as Family Guardian Fellowship is America Babylon the Great. The prophetic community is somewhat divided over, that's what I said, over whether or not America is the Babylon, the great, mentioned in Revelation 17 and 18. And um, I'm pretty sure the ones that disagree with, Amer with the U.S., Babylon, the great being the U.S., is because they're American. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to admit, you know, you know, you grew up in this place. You played baseball. You went to college. You know, you you eat hamburgers and hot dogs. You watch baseball games. You know, you you sit down and watch the the, uh, the World Series and everything that has to do with America. You you speak speak the American language, which is English. So this is this, and then you were taught, God bless America. Wait a minute, the president swearing on the Bible. So this can't be the place. But in the back of the mind and. In the back of your mind, you know it is, or you think it is. <clears throat> it says the case of identi identifying Babylon the Great um, with the U.S. 
In summary, the book of Revelation describes Babylon the Great as the dominant, ooh, as a dominant superpower in the world of the end times. Wow, there's a lot more than three. Is America new, <clears throat> a new Israel or a new Babylon? Um, it says John Rock is a current, uh, correct, that the U.S., that the U.S. is Mystery Babylon. The birth of the United States actually proclaimed the birth of Babylon. And this is out of Duke University. Okay. Is America new Israel or a new Babylon? Knowing the difference makes all the difference. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Okay, let me come down here. While I could offer a, mer a myriad, myriad uh, critiques of, of, of the ways, excuse me, Christians politic in America, perhaps one of the most significant mistakes made in is the most subtle using the wrong scriptural metaphor to understand the relationship between the church and the United States. Bluntly speaking, too many Christians either tactically or explicit, explicitly assume that the U.S. is like a new Israel. It's a righteous place. A, you know, the, the second place that God blessed. He blessed the land of Israel and blessed America. Now, mind you, you America, through their government officials, none of them, the Republicans or the Democrats, none of them speak about the Sabbath. I remember as a child, the blue laws where everything was closed on the Sunday, even though that wasn't a Sabbath, that was a so-called Christian Sabbath. This is a Christian nation when, when in reality, the, uh, the better, the better met met metaphor is America as Babylon. America as Babylon. Operating the wrong metaphor features Christian, Christian expectations and hopes of the land of the land they live in and also leads to us at times harming our neighbors who have different beliefs. Beliefs, values, and perspectives from our own, of course, seeing this land as a place for a Christian country is as, of course, the president swears on the Bible. Although the scriptures say, do, don't, do not swear on anything. Is as old as the early European settlers. I'm not gonna read all of this, but you can read it yourself. So anyway, so a lot of them know a lot of them moan. I just proved that. So now let's go on to the uh, let's go into the uh, the Bible Hub commentary. So uh, Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges. Mighty with a strong voice, we should read with a mighty voice. Babylon is fallen. Revelation fourteen and eight. Revelation twenty one and nine. Let's go to Revelation 14 and 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations, all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, this is about a week, week and a half, two weeks ago, you had uh, Kamala Harris. She went to certain African countries pushing the LGP. BTQ plus one, whatever you call it, ABC, XYZ. She basically was there to push that because um, what was that? The Uganda, I believe it was, that they passed a law and the, um, the, the parliament, the cabinet, whatever they call them over there, they all agreed that it's against the law to be a mo and either you're locked up. I think it's a lifetime you're locked up. And I think there's certain African countries that say they should be put to death because a lot of the 
people in Africa are is descendants of the Israelites. So in in um, Kamala Harris going over there, she represents Babylon, aka America. So that part of their fornication is you gotta you gotta honor these people under under um, you know humanism. You know they're they're humans, human rights. And that's the main reason why she went there for that reason. And they're going over there because there's a lot of influence among the Chinese. So, so that's a key scripture right there. Fornication. You know, when people become American, Americanized. People don't become Russianized. Back in the ancient pagan Roman Empire, people became Romanized. That's how big and vast that empire was. So the same thing uh, currently today, uh, people, certain nations um, carry themselves or become Americanized and a lot of them dream to come over here because you watch it on TV, see how beautiful America, America is and how you can become rich. And a lot of people came, a lot of different nations came over here and they came over here to get to eat a missile anyway. Isaiah 20, 21, verse 9. Um, and behold, he, here comes a, a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Means the same thing. The angel saying Babylon is fallen, is fallen in Revelation 18 and 2. Same message here. That Babylon is talking about this current Babylon. So it's given to Isaiah that Babylon will fall. What he understood was, the way he understood it was, it was talking about the current Babylon, the ancient pagan Babylonian empire. But when he received those visions, he saw fire in this place. He saw countless people dying. So he said, damn, man, most I'm going to take out Babylon like that. And what actually happened with ancient Babylon, it was a surgical strike um, it was the order given given to uh, a general. I got to go into the name of who actually slit, uh, killed uh, the, the king of Babylon and his lords. But the order came down from Darius the Mede. Darius the Mede. So it says Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Uh, and all the grave, graven images, their system, their Americanization of her gods, what are her gods? What are the things that you believe in in this country? He has broken to the ground. And how is he going to break it to the ground? By fire, make it, making it a desert. It says uh, the habitation of devils, be better, and habitation, similar vengeance is, den is denounced on the literal Babylon, Isaiah 13, 21 to 22, which this writer didn't understand because that's not how literal Babylon, ancient pagan ba Babylon went down. So let's, let's go here. It says, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there and there our houses shall be full of doleful creatures and owls shall dwell there and sad trees shall dance there. That didn't happen. That was, that's describing the desert. And then, and this is describing desert creatures so so Isaiah Isaiah didn't see that he saw fire he saw everybody on that plot of land destroyed so that did, that didn't happen to ancient Babylon so Cambridge they're going off clearly going off is it better and habitation similar vengeance as denounced on the literal Babylon all you got to do is go to ancient Babylon. How was it destroyed? How did the Persian and Mede come in? And they'll tell you it was a surgical strike. It says, now it says, and on Edom. We know that Edom is still alive. We know that the, the current world leading nation are the Edomites. We know that there's certain nations breaking off from the Edomites, which include Edomites. Russia are fellow Edomites that are against uh, the U.S. Edomites. 
and soon to be the NATO nations, which are all Edomite controlled nations and e the EU, which is a political and economic part of the beast will come against the woman. That's the woman. They, some of them know it, but they don't want to, they don't want to say it because it's, it's not a politically correct or religiously correct. And this is why a vocab doesn't know it because he, he went to a seminary school. All he, all he is is a mockingbird. All he is is a monkey. He's a monkey. That's all he is. He's, he doesn't know anything. He big in, he bigged up his game tremendously by watching our videos. He teaches very differently. Oh, by the way, he's a pagan. He's a pagan Christian. I was watching a video this morning with uh, Apostle Gabar, and I think part of the video was uh, vocab is a pagan or something like that. His newest video, and he said opening up. Uh, that that video, the opening up of that video, that live stream, he's mentioned um, some blessings to you on uh, Resurrection Sunday. What's he talking about? Talking about Easter. He might say, "Oh, I don't believe in Easter. I don't follow East Easter. Protestants don't do that, or whatever the case." I was a Protestant. Easter was a part of the, you know, Protestant bullshit. So he did say Easter Resurrection Sunday, and I bet you he believed that. The, the Messiah was uh, killed on a, on a Friday. I bet you he believed that. You know, he's nothing but a pagan, and he's nothing but a mockingbird and a monkey. You know, like monkey see, monkey do. It says, uh, and you're losing big time. Isaiah 34, verse 13 to 15 mentions Edom, and this is the same event. So the Mosai and Revelation referred to this place as Edom, um, Babylon the Great. But in Isaiah, it's, it was spoken of as a land of Edom. Same prophecy, Edom. It says Isaiah 34, 13 to 15. It said, and thorns shall come up in her palaces, uh, nettles and brambles in the, fort, in the fortress thereof, these letters are small, and it shall be an inhabit, inhabitation of dragons and a court of owls, meaning desert-like creatures. It is not quite certain which of the words used in those passages. This is talking about the new Babylon, Babylon the Great, the U.S. This is also talking about Bab the new Babylon the Great, the U.S., America. So this place is going to be destroyed. They're sticking, to, they're sticking their nose in the business that they shouldn't have their nose in. Okay, you shouldn't be a ferret with your nose in everything. But guess what? That's the most high guiding you into that. Ultimately, you're spending, how many, how many, how much did uh, Biden uh, put into the uh, gift to the Ukrainians? Well over 100 billion. Well over, you know how much, you, you know how much you can do in America with 100 billion dollars? You can do something with a hundred billion dollars. He don't care. He don't care about the American people. He don't care about you niggas. They're just concerned about the the Ukraine, which is uh, is, is not a state of uh, the United States. It's not one of the states. And ultimately, they they're giving their money to to the to the guy that's going to lose. That's like betting your money on the guy to win, and he gets his ass whipped, and you lose all your all your money. But ultimately, the ultimate price is, and the Rus Russia will completely take over. It's a matter of time before they take over Bakhmut and then take over the whole country known as the Ukraine. And those soldiers that don't comply with the Russian military, they're just going to kill them. The ones that do comply, they're going to work with them. That's that assembly of nations gathered together in either Jeremiah 50 or Jeremiah 51. And then you got China involved, China and uh, Russia are allies. And then you have the BRIC, BRICS, BRICS nations. And then you have, I believe it's either 16 or 32. Well, I know it was one report of 16 nations wanting to join the BRICS alliance, which ultimately is going to be more than the NATO uh, EU alliance. Well, let's deal with NATO. So, but but ultimately, NATO will 
pretty much take the side of Russia. Not so much take the side, but come against Babylon, come against the Hur. That's Revelation 17. And you know, I always go into this because it's prophecy. The main things, what did the Apostle Paul say in uh, 1 Corinthians 14? He said, but rather, but rather that ye prophesy. The most important thing that you're supposed to be doing right now is prophesying. The ones of you that came into this truth, that tasted the kingdom, the glory, and you fell out, you turn your back on the, on the plow, you will be a part of America's fuel. You'll be the fuel to the fire. All you guys that turn your back on the plow, you stop doing the work of the most high, you went back into your normal life, like everything's going to be normal. Everything just went back to being a Baptist or whatever the hell you were. Guess what? Every last one of you, men and women, you're going to take the karagma, guaranteed. You're going to take the karagma. You're going to take that karagma. And, and you're going to be destroyed. But you're going to get a cancer first. Revelation 16 and 2. So you, you can run, but you can't hide. You can't outrun a missile. You, can, you can't outrun a supersonic uh, missile system or hypersonic, hypersonic missile system, which can't be detected by radar. That's what it meant by a thief in the night. So this motherfucker's done. This motherfucker's done. And it'll be beautiful if Nero come back in office and bring some goddamn, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, uh, damn, what do you call it? Uh, guillotines with him. Cause they're gonna have to push. They're gonna have to push that thing. People ain't gonna accept that. There's a lot of people, stupid people, that's gonna accept the karagma. All right. And then you other camps, you other major camps, you got a lot of explaining to do. And we're gonna laugh at you. We're gonna laugh at you when you try to explain your way out of that bullshit that you've been teaching them. It is not quite certain which of the words used in those passages are names of demons or goblins. And which of the terrestrial birds, birds of the earth and beasts, but there is little doubt that Isaiah, like John, means to describe both as occupying the desolate, the, the desolated city. The desolated, the desolated city is this place right here. When the smoke is cleared after so many years, or the fire burning, the, the fire is going to stop, then the smoke is going to billow for a number of years, then it's going to stop. And what's going to be left is what? The line of confusion, Isaiah 34. It's going to be the biggest desert on the planet Earth, and nobody can go here for vacation. This is going to be the for, forbidden zone for real. You did it. You did it. Damn you all to hell. That was uh, this guy, uh, Charlton Heston, the worst actor in acting, in the, in the history of acting, with his overacting ass, none but a big ham. That was when, um, what was it? It was, uh, was it Dr. Zeers? I think it was Dr. Zeers. He said, don't go there. You might not like what you find. And he went anyway, and he saw the uh, Statue of Liberty in the desert, and he realized that he, he wasn't on another planet, that he came back to the earth, and he went down Wound, wound up in New York. And so what was that talking about? I was talking about the destruction of the missiles because they show you that in the next installment to the Planet of the Apes series. I believe it was the, the next installment on the, the installment after that where you had these uh, beings of people that worshiped the missiles. They had certain missiles that didn't explode and they were worshiping bowing down to the missiles. It says those series, the first one and a couple of them were good. The first one was good. The second, maybe the third. And then the one where uh, uh, Cornelius and uh, the one chimp that was able to talk. I mean, they were, they were able to talk, but the one chimp that uh, came into power, what was he? Caesar, I believe his name was. And they, they did a, a, a movie on this one recently on that character. It says uh, the whole probably a a prison, uh, not a fortress. It is it is the same word that is translated cage in the next uh, cl uh, clause and and prison 
it says in uh, first first Peter uh, Ephesians three and nine. Okay, I was checking out some some of them, some others. Okay, it says this again. Goes into Revelation 18, then it says, goes into Revelate, I mean Isaiah 20, 21 and 9. It says, and he answered and, and said, Babylon the greatest form is fallen. And all the graven images of her gods he has uh, broken to the ground that's the missile the missile's going to break everything then you got here babylon her, her fall was announced before chapter uh revelation 14 and 8 and there followed another angel saying babylon is falling it's falling and uh, that great city because she made all nations Drink of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. She pushed that uh, politics, um, any religion, you can be a mo. See, the Mer America call calls itself a God fearing country, but they don't lead you to the most high. Because if they led you to the most high, they would say, <clears throat> they, they would come out and say who the real people are. And they wouldn't be helping Israel, they would, they would condemn that land, Israel. And over there in Israel, you can do whatever, whatever the hell you want, pretty much. They got gay parades. You got Pink City. And um, the truth is coming out every day that the people that are over there, the uh, JJs, they're not the real people. That we are the real people. So what they, what they call, we found out who we were, and they called us a hate group. You you out, out of town, you come, come to your house from vacation, and there's people living in your house, and you call the cops on them, and they call you, are you teaching hate? This is hate. No, this is my motherfucking house. Get the fuck out, bitch. So they know, but they don't know. Babylon is falling, is falling. Um, it said, um, Isaiah 20, 21 and 9 again, Babylon is falling, Babylon is falling. Jeremiah 51 and 8. <clears throat> Babylon is suddenly falling and destroyed. How for her, take bomb for her pain, as so be she may <clears throat> be healed. She's not going to be healed. The, the destruction is coming today, but what's going to seal the deal is when the missiles hit. That's what's going to seal the, the deal. And there's no turning back. There's no turning back. There's nothing you can do, you know, like it says in um, uh, First Kings, the eighth chapter. A great chapter. That's a prayer of uh, Solomon, which is Yahushai, Christ, so you can understand. He said, if we're under another nation, if we're in any type of trouble, if we turn and face the east, then the Most High will have mercy on us. And that's why we're still catching hell, because you niggas want to butt. I'm, like, I ain't, I'm an African. I'm this. I'm that. So this time when the Most High comes to deliver his people, he's only coming for the elect. E-L-E-C-T the elect. That's it. He's coming to the ones that have their mind right. If your mind's not right, if you if you worship in some comedic God, you're going to eat a missile. But before you do that, you're going to take you're going to you're going to take the karagma. So all you guys, shaka most all you guys. You all you guys, that's that's going to be to separate separate the believers between the unbelievers, the elect and just Israelites. Because if you go ahead and take that karagma, that's the key to you being destroyed, to you eating a missile. So this is Jeremiah 51 and 8. Let's see what this says. Babylon is suddenly falling. Okay, I read that. Not going to make this long. So the more these Christian scholars study, the more they... America's in the back of their mind. It's... You know, America's back in their mind. Let's do this again. Let's come back over here. I'm going to pull this back. Is America Babylon the Great? Is America Babylon the Great? 
the case for identifying Babylon the Great with uh, United Whatever. Um, is America a new Israel or a new Babylon? Is America Babylon in Revelation? Is America the great Babylon that is mentioned in the book? Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. What is Babylon the great? Is America the new Babylon? So there you go. So they know, but they don't know. It says here, Revelation 16 and 8, it should start from 1, and the fourth angel poured out his vow on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And that fire ultimately represents the fire from the laser, from those missiles, from those uh, ships, the chariots, and the missiles. The, the missiles are going to do the main damage. That's the most size uh, military mechanized army. That's in Joel 2. That's Revelation 18. We read that. Isaiah 3, verse 21 to 22. And this goes hand in hand with um, Isaiah 34, 16. Revelation 1, uh, Revelation 18 and 2. Isaiah. Isaiah 13 and 19. Uh, Babylon, the glory of the kingdom shall be as when the Mosai overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. The ancient pagan Babylon wasn't taken down by fire coming from the skies. Sodom and Gomorrah was taken down by fire coming from the skies. So if Isaiah believed when he when he saw these prophecies, and he realized, or the Israelites realized after the prophecy that Babylon didn't go down that way, that showed you that Isaiah didn't know what he was writing. He just wrote it. It's for us today to break it down. You got guys writing, I'm gonna write a book on this, I'm gonna write a book. The book, the book is already written, man. Our job is not to add more books, but to interpret the books that was given to us to the Most High, from the Most High, by way of the prophets, which we are the prophets coming back. Everything is reincarnated. Sodom and Gomorrah, it shall never be inhabited. That's this place, the, the, the Forbidden Zone in Planet of the Apes. And I believe you can watch the whole movie on um, YouTube for free, Planet of the Apes movie, the original one. That was the best one. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent, meaning no other nation going to come out of, from outside of America, another country, to have businesses. <clears throat> His tents there, meaning businesses, neither shall the shepherd make their fold there. Now, the, the Bible Belt, Middle America, that's where all of your Food come from the grain, the corn, the, the beef, the eggs, the chickens. It all comes out of middle America, which is called the Bible Belt. If you ever been out there, if you ever rode on a bus or a car and you rode throughout the Midwest, I remember as a kid driving throughout the, the, the country from uh, the east to the west. And um, I remember places like uh, Iowa you know, places in middle America, you would see nothing, but you see the road and nothing but cornfields or wheat fields. And you would, and you would, you know, it'd be 12 o'clock at noon and it'd be two o'clock, you go to sleep, you wake back up and you look and it looked like you ain't going nowhere because you just see, you for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, you see all that grain and you see farms out there. If you ever been outside of New York, so all that stuff, when you go to the supermarket and you buy your, your, you know, your chicken, your eggs, your cereals, whatever you buy, it all comes from middle America. So all that's going to be gone. 
All that's going to be gone, man. It says, shall it be dwelt, dwelt in from generation, to, never be dwelt in generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch their tent there. Neither shall the shepherd uh, make their fold there. No businesses, but wild beasts of the desert, Revelation 18 and 2, shall lie there. That's what it means by devils and every hateful and unclean bird. I'm not talking about Esau taking down Gad. So High Priest Ariel was dead wrong on that. And their houses shall be full of dull food creatures, desert animals, and owls shall dwell there, and uh, set trees shall dance there. Okay, Revelation 16, verse 8. What does that say? And the fourth angel poured out. Okay, we read that. There was one in Jeremiah. Bear me for a minute. Let me do this. Okay, here it is. Pope of commentary. And he cried mighty with a loud voice and said, and he, he cried with a strong voice saying, saying, this strong voice is characteristic of the heavenly utterances. Revelation 7 verse 2, let's see what that says. We know what it says. It goes into the ceiling of the 144,000. Revelation 14 and 7, Babylon, the great has fallen, has fallen the event. Uh, the future is described as past, being predetermined right, because you saw after the fact. What, what, what uh, John the apostle saw was the missiles hitting this place, and he saw them making money, Revelation 18, Marion, do, uh, that goes back with Luke, that goes back to Luke 17. And they married and given married, just as in the days of Noah, but instead of water, it's going to be fire. And then he saw the missiles actually come. He said they were about the, the weight of a talent. He said hell fell as the weight of a talent. It says in the in the council of the most high, the words here are a reproduction of uh Isaiah 20, uh, 21 and 9, Babylon is fallen, it's fallen, and um, it's become the habitation of devils. Uh, so they're trying to figure it out, but they can't figure it out. If they were honest with themselves and they really studied, they would say, this sounds like America to me. Isaiah 13, 21, I believe we read that. And this is what the Holy Spirit is all about. The Bible, the scriptures is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit or the comforter is the spirit that comes with the book. That's why when Vocab Malone opens a book and Dr. Brown opens a book, it doesn't, it doesn't work for them. That, that's in that movie, uh, Jacob's Ladder. That's a classic movie. You can get that. That's, that movie came out in the 90s. Where the guy, one of the scenes where the guy pulled out a Bible, he said, I got to read this, but it doesn't help me or something to that effect. Then he blew up in a car when the guy walked away. So that book is not going to help you. It's just going to, that's a stumbling block for you. That's a trap for you. He ain't got, vocab has no business going into the book. He doesn't know the book. And your teachers don't know the book. Because if they did, they would, they would admit that Babylon the Great in the book of Revelation, and for that matter, Isaiah, um, and uh, even Jeremiah, that that's this place right here. They're not going to say that, but some of these Christian, which appear to be Edomites, they'll come out and say it. I just showed you that. I just went to the Google, and I showed you that, right? 
Revelation, Revelation 13 and 21. <clears throat> oh, but this is what I want to do. I want to go to Jeremiah 51 and 37. Then I'm going to end on that. And you got to read this whole chapter. Start at six, uh, 36. And I'll, and I'll end on that. It says, Therefore, thus say, if you how behold, I will plead thy cause <clears throat> and take vengeance for thee, for the Israelites, and I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. There are all these great bodies, the Mississippi, the, 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 all the lakes, the, the bodies of water, in, in the Americas, the great rivers and the lakes and so forth, they're all going to be dried up. It says, and, and Babylon shall be, become heaps, which is the, the U.S., America, a dwelling place for dragons. That's Isaiah 34. <clears throat> that's uh, Revelation 18. Uh, that's a, a Revelation, I mean, Isaiah 13, an astonishment and a, and a hissing without an inhabitant. Because uh, it's going to be uninhabitable. It says, they shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lions whelps. In their heat, I will make their feast and, and I will make them drunken that they, that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake up, save the Lord. The most High going to put you to sleep and you ain't going to wake up. Because there's going to be a point where you're going to be gathered together, your thoughts, your aspirations in this system, in Esau's system. This is Esau. Esau is the head right now. Esau is the head guy. But the most I getting ready to put him to sleep. And you're going to wake up in captivity. And then you're really going to be put to sleep because we're going to do away with you. And how are you going to come back? We don't know. We believe you're going to come back maybe through one nation, dark nation, or mingle among the nations. You ain't coming, you ain't coming back as an Israelite because you ain't an Israelite. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter. That's in Isaiah 34, like rams with he coats. That's Isaiah. So when you read Isaiah 34, this, this is the way I break it down. America or the U.S. is nothing but an altar. And the prophets that go out there and speak, we're just men sitting on an altar condemning this place so after the most i said okay you can you completely condemn this place you did the ceremonies you you pronounced judgment against them you brought you brought out the evidence you you you, you uh you um you filtered it through the scriptures and then you also bring out you also pronounced judgment against them through the spirit of the most high so now i'm gonna i'm gonna beam you up and I'm going to make this place a, a sacrifice. This is going to be an animal sacrifice. Because he compared you people, you Edomites, to goats and bullocks and, and calves and so forth. So, so it's here again. <clears throat> it says, how is a she, shishash taken? Which is another word for Babylon. And how is the praise of the whole earth, Babylon, Surprise. You're gonna be surprised because this destruction is coming as a thief in the night. How has Babylon become an astonishment among the nations? When are they become going to become an astonishment among the nations? When they were far off looking at the smoke of your torment. Oh Babylon, that great city for one hour, such riches have come to naught. The sea has come up upon Babylon, she is covered with the multitude of the waves are up. There ain't going to be no water. But it's, this is just parabolic. Poetic. Because water ain't going to get you. You're going to wish there was water around you to douse the flame, but it's not going to happen. Fire. Uh, the Apostle Peter said the first world went out by what? By water. The second world is going to go out by fire. The cities are a desolation. New York City. Las Vegas. Uh, anywhere, any any state, all states, Texas, all states, Philadelphia, which is a city, everything's going to be done away with. And everything, gonna, after the smoke clears, everything's going to look the same. It's going to be a desert. 
the line of confusion. Isaiah 34, a dry land and a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither do it, because there's nothing there. You go out there, you're going to die. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. Any son of man, it says, neither doeth any son of man or man, the son of man, pass thereby. And I will punish Baal in Babylon, and I will, because there's a spirit. These elites, they bow to a spirit. And I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he have swallowed up. Well, that's Job. That's, that's Job 20. That which he have swallowed up. And the nations shall not flow together anymore unto him. Oh, I want to, my dream is to come to America. Yeah, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Wall meaning the foundation, the structure, the, the guard tower, whatever you want to call it. It says, and the nations shall not flow together anymore unto, unto him. Yeah, the wall of Babylon shall fall. But it says here, I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he swallowed up. Let me go to Job. So Job was talking about the downfall of this place, of this system. Job 20, and then I'll close. Do this. I'm sorry, I'll come back over here. Let me do it this way. Bear me for a minute. There we go. There we go. 17. Yet his meat, 14. 15, 14, 15. Yet his meat in his bowels is turned. You got an upset stomach. It is the gall of ass within him. He has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again. The most I cast them out of his belly. So they, they, they should have put this, when they did their commentary, they should have added Job, because this Job is seeing what? The downfall of Babylon the Great. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom. Just, and like I said, I did this just to show you that they do a lot of studying, but if the Spirit's not with you, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. And plus, you're not going to open your mind up wide enough to accept the fact that maybe this could be talking about the U.S. or America. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.